everyone. Well, I'm so excited to be here with my colleagues from the management department. Dr. Bill Bateman is the chair of management and we're joined with Dr. Kathy Bush, Dr. Laura Frost and Dr. Ann Sorbier. And we're gonna talk today specifically about the master of science in management. So my first question is to you, Dr. Bateman, Bill, tell us why students should get an MSM. Well, the MSM uh, is one of the most flexible degrees that I think you can study. It can uh, land you a job as an entry level manager all the way up to executive director in almost any type of organization that you can think of. It can be healthcare, it can be banking and insurance, it can be retail, um, and it can be not-for-profit in, in working for charities or other not-for-profit not type organizations. So it, it's very flexible. The jobs are well-paying. Uh, the starting salaries, you know, well, uh, starting salaries in the 50s to 60s, and as an executive director or say a vice president of an organization, you know, the sky is the limit, uh, depending on the organization. And there's a lot of jobs in management. One thing that's never gonna change is that companies need good managers. Yes. One question you might be asking yourself is why an MSM over an MBA? And the answer is the MBA is a great degree if your goals or your position now is to become part of that top management C-suite, as they call it, you know, an executive vice president or even a, a president or CEO someday. And students that come into an MBA are already in a management position for the most part. Mm -hmm. If you're just getting started or, you know, you think you want to just be a great career manager, the MSM is the program for you. Yeah, I love that. I love how you talk too about the nonprofit piece because there's just so many times we have opportunities in the nonprofit world for really great managers, leaders, you know, executive directors. And this degree would really help people get those positions and really do well. You mentioned the MBA. So I want to go to Ann and, and tell us a little bit about the opportunity, the very unique opportunity Walsh students have to earn both the MSM, a Master of Science in Management, and an MBA program as that dual degree in a very short amount of time. Yeah, Walsh really has done a, a phenomenal job of finding a way to connect both programs like the MSM, which have, as Bill mentioned, a really deep focus on management and all the aspects that, that a graduate would need to be exposed to have experience in to really become a truly effective manager. And again, as Bill mentioned, in organizations of all different types and of all different varieties and sizes. The MBA is more of a generalist degree. It's designed to provide students with a really broad background, but focused on all the critical aspects and areas of business that, that graduates would need to be aware of to lead in those top level positions and organizations. So at, at Walsh, we've got, got overlap between the MBA and the MSM such that a good handful of courses that you take in both programs allow for those courses to be counted in both the MBA and the MSM. Um, and in a relatively short period of time, students really do have the ability to walk away with not just an MSM degree, but an MBA in addition to that MSM. Well, and I really love what you said about the MBA, giving the students the focus on the different areas of business. And imagine now being able to combine that with an MSM to really get the management piece of it. I mean, boy, that really sets you up well for leadership positions, for vice president positions, for that C-suite position as you build on your experience, which is so great. And Walsh is known for that, you know, having exceptional instructors who are very well credentialed and very much experienced in their field. So that brings us to the next great question of why Walsh? You know, why choose Walsh for your Master of Science and Management degree? And Laura, tell us a little bit about that. Well, for me, it boils down to two things. If you really care about learning and about learning what's relevant now, then come to Walsh. Um, we have, of course, all of the great foundational um, curriculum that you would expect at any institution, but in particular, we're out there um, adding things to our curriculum like complexity thinking and brain science and design thinking, uh, things that are really relevant for our world today uh, that are because it's just changing all the time. We try to continually adapt our curriculum 
to accommodate for the change that's going on out there in the real world. So curriculum and what you're going to learn is the number one reason. And the number two reason right up there next to it would be the faculty. The faculty care about the students. Um, they care about the curriculum. They're continually developing it, adding to it, expanding it based on their real world experience and their research. So. Um, that's a one-two punch. I, I just don't see how you could go wrong with uh, those two things. Oh, I mean, absolutely. You know, that's the value add that Walsh brings is that faculty piece, that interaction with the students. You know, I've talked to several alumni now and students who have said that it is the faculty that really make the institution. And I agree with that a thousand percent. You mentioned the design thinking course, and I really want to highlight this because not only is it relevant and timely, but it's really so applicable to the world we're in where you know, professionals are being asked to innovate, to problem solve, to think through complex things and have a creative approach to it. Would you tell us, and I know everyone here got to be a part of the design thinking course, but tell us a little bit about that course and what students are saying. So students are really getting outside of their comfort zone with this course. Um, we're pushing them like they've never been pushed before. We've all been raised to be analytical thinkers. And when you learn design thinking, you learn to be a lot more of a global or a synthetic thinker. Uh, so we're pushing students um, really to um, get out of that one mindset only for a pr approaching problems, but particularly, like you say, Susie, uh, for innovating. Um, we don't have to um, try to convince you because there's so many companies out there like IDEO. Um, their whole business is built around design thinking and innovation. And what's going to help a company um, thrive and survive these days is going to be staying up with the keeping up with the demands of uh, the marketplace and that's only going to happen through innovation and innovation can only happen through new ways of thinking continually new ways of thinking oh i love that that is so on point i mean think about that because many of us when we hear the word management we're thinking okay but what does that mean for us in 2020 with remote teams mm -hmm. like we're all remote right and you know remote workplaces and different markets and what you're talking about is so perfect because it equips students with that ability to think in a creative way, in a new way, and really do it in a design thinking way. So I love that. Kathy, tell us a little bit too about what, oh, go ahead, Bill. Yeah, add to that. Yeah, I just wanted to mention on that point with the design thinking and some other courses, to keep our uh, <clears throat> curriculum relevant and current is we're partnering with uh, the thought leaders in these dif different areas. So for instance, on design thinking, we partnered with the Henry Ford Learning Institute in Dearborn, Michigan. And they are, besides IDEO and the Stanford Design School and the Rotman School of Design in, in Toronto, they are one of the leading thought leaders. So we're going to the top subject matter experts to help us understand and further develop these courses. And in addition, I just want to mention that we re recently partnered with SHRM, which is the uh, Society of Human uh, Resource Management, and our uh, program is now aligned with SHRM uh, requirements so that students can become SHRM uh, certified after taking our concentration in human resources. Yeah, that is really critical because imagine being able to earn a master's degree and then have that master's degree align with the SHRM competencies, which is the gold standard in the HR certification world. And then to be able to sit for that exam the value add is huge. I mean, you know, you see job postings all the time for HR and, you know, employee relations, and they always say, sure, I'm certified. So this would set students up so well for that. And I love the forethought of building that in to the curriculum so that we're really delivering such value because you are making an investment. I mean, that's the big thing is education is an investment in you that pays lifetime dividends. At the time, it feels like a stretch, right? And it feels like something should I do this right now? Is this the right time? Look at the economy, I don't know. But Kathy, tell us why now is such a great time to invest in an MSN and to invest in education. Right, and so investment is the way to think about this. So of course in 2020 and with the COVID-19 pandemic, we all find ourselves facing challenges we didn't expect, um, some of them very difficult challenges to overcome, but there are also opportunities in this period of time. And so whether or not you um, had considered doing uh, your master's degree and, and studying at, at the graduate level in the past, 
you may have dismissed it because you didn't have the time. Maybe your work life had a lot of travel in it or a major commute. And now in this interesting period of time, that's different. And it might afford you a small window of opportunity to fit in your studies with otherwise busy period of time. So that's one way to look at it. Um, perhaps you had a wonderful uh, travel life personally, and uh, now you're not traveling. And so you might have some funds that you weren't spending in some of those other ways that you uh, liked to spend your discretionary money. And, and now you have funds available. And so these are things that are unique right now that are allowing people to pause and say, wow, you know, I could make an investment in me. What would that look like? Um, this might be the best opportunity, the best timing for you. But more importantly, what's going on right now all around the world in businesses and in organizations is that we're all hitting kind of the reset button. We're all pausing and taking a step back and saying, what do organizations need? What do people who work in organizations need? What does it look like to work effectively? And we're all thinking, you know, going back to what Dr. Frost said about sort of the, the opportunity right now to think differently and to be creative and to meet needs. Um, organizations are doing that. And so studying management right now, studying about organizations right now gives you this great opportunity to be in the beginning stages of this reset process where we're really having an effect on the change for the future when we come out of this pandemic and we have an opportunity to take off and uh, grow our businesses in really significant ways, it's gonna look different. And so learning more about who you are and that process and how you can contribute, this is a great time to do that. Kathy, that is so on point. I wanna highlight two things that you said that I think are just so critical for anyone listening. Number one is that reset button of what's going on in businesses and organizations. There's no better time to come into the marketplace with an investment, a credential in yourself with that design thinking component. So you are poised and ready for that reset. Also, the job market is going to shift. So a lot of these jobs already were going the way of AI and now that's just increased. So having that managerial acumen, having that business credential is going to separate you into a different pile for resumes, especially when people know you can innovate, you can problem solve, you can persevere. And then you mentioned too on, you know, the HR certification that Bill was talking about, that's going to become really important as we look at what remote work and remote teams and what a new diverse and inclusive workforce look like. And so to be able to step into the HR space, whether you work in HR or not, to be able to manage HR professionals, it's really necessary that you have that so that you can really make sure it's strategic HR leadership. So that's just so critical. And there's other practical pieces to this. You, you know, you talked about the faculty who are practitioners. You all have had experience in industry. And also we talk about the CAPSIM. I know CAPSIM is a simulation program that really helps students. So Bill, tell us a little bit about how you're integrating that so that when students are in this program, they're almost in like a lifetime management real world experience. Yeah, when a student gets to the end or very close to the end of their program, they will uh, take a course which is called Capstone. And it's designed to, uh, you know, kind of review and implement and apply and you know, do some self-reflection on everything that you've learned through the program. And one of the ways that we're gonna help you do this is by uh, running a, a business simulation. It's a uh, online web-based simulation and you'll be in teams of uh, four or five. And not only will you be working with other management students, but you know, depending on the time of the year and the schedule, you may be working on a team with uh, marketing and say uh, finance students. So it's gonna be a cross discipline where you can learn from them, they can learn from you. But really the beauty of the simulation is that you'll actually be running your own business and have to make decisions on almost every area of business that you can think of. And uh, so it, it's, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, it's the application part of this program. We're trying to get to a point in this program where we have very few, if any, exams. We feel oh. that there's better ways to assess your performance. So really it's all about application, simulation and self-reflection. And from the first course, which is a leadership course to the last course, you'll be doing all of that. 
Oh, I love that. And you know why that's so important to think about this. If you're listening, this is not going to be an old school management program, meaning tests and quizzes. And then you get to the end and you have to write like the 60 page paper. This really is a professional development sort of program you're going through. It ends and it culminates into a degree, which is great because what a great return on your investment. You get a master's degree. I think according to the most recent census, they found like, I, don't quote me on this, I want to be careful, but I think it's like around 11 to 15% of people have a master's, this is in the US. So it still is a very good credential. Maybe it's 25, I forget if that's postdoc and master's. But when you look at that, you realize it does help you and it does prepare you for what the workforce is going to be like. So it's just so neat too, if people are thinking, I don't know if I want to go back to school right now. I don't want to get into the tests and the quizzes. That is not this program. It's very applied. It works with working professionals. It gives you simulations, opportunities to connect with other students and opportunities for real world application. One thing a student said to me is, she said, wow, I, I can learn in the class and then apply it in my workplace the next day. And that to me is really dynamic and engaged learning. So Thank you all so much for joining and sharing about the management program, the MSM, how you can do a dual degree, which I highly recommend. I mean, that is such a great investment, so worth the investment with the MBA and the MSM. But thank you everyone for sharing. Thank you. Thank you.